What is up people and welcome to another video. In this video we'll be taking a look at Kubernetes specifically on Docker for Windows. So what we'll be taking a look at as is the prerequisites, how to install, configure, some of the issues you, you may find along the way and how to solve them and we'll also take a look at configuring the cluster for first time use. So without further ado, let's go. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is take a look at a number of things you're going to need to install in order to get started. So the first thing you're going to want to make sure is that Hyper-V is enabled. If you already have Hyper-V enabled, that's the hypervisor for Windows, um, you can skip this step. But to enable it, you're going to click on the start bar. You're going to search for the control panel. Um, once the control panel comes up, you're going to go to programs, go to turn um, Windows features on and off and you will see a list like this pop up and what you're going to look for is the Hyper-V um, section and you want to tick all these boxes turn them on and press apply and okay um, if you cannot turn it on from here you also need to make sure that you have turned it on in the BIOS on your machine if it's disabled some laptops come shipped with the um, Hyper-V turned off by default so you won't be able to turn it on unless you boot into the BIOS and turn it on over there and then yeah you just come here turn it on and you're good to go so the main reason why you need Hyper-V enabled is because Docker for Windows as well as the Kubernetes offering is are basically Linux technologies. So the whole um, software package will run a Linux virtual machine behind the scenes for you. So the next thing you're going to need is Docker for Windows. So go head over to Google, search for Docker for Windows and you'll see a, the link to the Docker website. So getting started with Docker for Windows. Um, once you go into there, you will see a bunch of instructions. Um, the main one is the installation, so you're going to want to go ahead and click on that. That'll go through the, to the installation page where you can download from Docker Hub. Um, once you go onto that um, link, it'll ask you to log in. So in order to use Docker, you need to create a Docker Hub account. So go ahead and create one, sign in. Once you've signed in, you can follow the remaining steps to download the installer. And once you've started installation, um, things will get rolling. So once Docker is installed, see right at the bottom here, you open up the system tray, you'll see a little whale icon that'll give you the status of Docker. You can right click this here, you can restart it pretty quickly if there's any problems. Um, you can head over to settings. On the setting menu, there's a bunch of things that are quite interesting. Um, the main ones are the shared drive. You're gonna wanna go ahead and share your drive so that you can do Docker volume mounts. And here's a basic um, example of how to run an Alpine container and just see what um, is inside of the volume to make sure that the container can actually see what's what you're mounting in. So you can mount files to the container. <laughs> Now to install Kubernetes, it's really, really simple. All you do is head over to the Kubernetes setting and enable it. So you just press this uh, tick box and you say apply. It'll give you a little prompt to say it may take a few minutes. Um, it also requires internet connection because what this will do is download all the cluster components. Um, I think it will it might use the same Docker machine or run a separate um, Docker machine on the hypervisor. So let's go ahead and install that. You can now see the status of it here in the bottom left corner. You can see Docker is up and running, Kubernetes is starting. So it's creating another machine in the background. Woohoo! So we've successfully installed Kubernetes. Okay, so now what we're going to want to do is head over to Google, type kubectl download and search for Kubernetes kubectl. You'll see this install and set up um, documentation will come up and this is the guide for how to install kubectl. Kubectl is the command line utility used to operate and manage and basically work with Kubernetes. The installation instructions are pretty straightforward. There's a section for Windows right here. There's a link also that you can click which will give you the latest version of kubectl. So just go ahead and click that. That'll start the download. So you can download this um, binary or this exe file and put it anywhere in your machine wherever you want. I've put it under C, um, created a uh, folder called kubectl and you can see it's in there, kubectl.exe. And the next thing you're going to want to do is head over to the control panel and just search for environ. You'll see environment variables come up for the system. Now you can do two things. You can either set it up for your account 
or you can set it up for the whole system so anyone that logs in can use it so i just set it up for the whole system i click on that it'll take me through to the environment variable section and here i can either do um set up the path for just my user account or for the entire um, operating system so what you want to want to do is pick one of them and then expand them and you'll see all these paths here notice that i've created a new one so you can hit over click the new button and you can start typing in a path i've added here one called c slash kubectl so that now tells the system that whenever i type kubectl it's going to know where to find that exe so if once once you've added an entry into your path variable you want to make sure you restart your powershell window if you have one open already because otherwise it won't load the path variables um, you need to have a fresh one open and what you want to go ahead and do is just type kubectl and you'll see automatically it'll print out the help commands for kubectl that means you've configured your command line to know where kubectl is so kubectl has the ability to interface with multiple kubernetes clusters and it does this through a config now this kubectl will be pointing to a kubernetes config somewhere on your system when you've installed docker for windows and you enabled kubernetes it will create an entry for you now to see that entry what i want you to do is type kubectl config and then type current context that'll give you the current context of um, <clears throat> what is configured for kubectl so it's docker for desktop so whatever i do um, whatever commands i run with kubectl will be run against my kubernetes cluster on docker for desktop you can have multiple contexts added so you can have your development environment your staging environment your production environment all configured within that kube config and we will dive into kubectl and the kube config in a future video but for now you can see we were able to configure our kubectl and we're ready to start working on our docker for windows environment so to see whether the environment is up and running what i want to do is say kubectl get nodes and you'll see we have one node that's one machine called docker desktop and it's running so i can also say kubectl get pods and we see there's nothing deployed in this cluster and i will go over all of these concepts in a future video um, in a whole series we'll break it down keep the videos short and informative but what we've done here is we've created a Kubernetes cluster um, and whatever we do with this cluster is going to be the same as your production environment. And that's the beauty about Kubernetes is it abstracts away the machines. So whether it's a Docker machine running here on our on our Windows environment or whether it's a um, machine in the cloud, it doesn't matter. So the way we talk to Kubernetes is going to be the same way between your local, your development environment and your production environment. All right. So it's literally that simple um, installing Docker on Windows installing kubectl and making sure your cluster is up and running so that's it for this video guys um, stay tuned for the next video we'll be taking a look at how to configure kubectl in a lot more details we'll be taking a look at how to become efficient with the command line using all the different commands that kubectl provides us and so that we can basically operate kubernetes locally as well as in production and then we'll also take a look at all the different objects how to deploy to kubernetes how to enable services ingress configuration secret management and all of these great things so until next time peace <music>